Once more, I'm Reverend Dr. Jack Sullivan, Jr. I am the Executive Director of the Ohio Council Churches, a 102-year-old organization that brings together 17 denominations that are Christian from across the state of Ohio. And I'm pleased today to be in this sacred space. Thank you, Pastor Thales, for welcoming us into your sanctuary today. And I'm pleased to stand with colleagues, people of faith and vision who will speak to you today on issues of concern that require us as people of faith to speak up and to speak out. First, I want to read a statement that has been signed by 273 faith leaders and 14 different faith organizations concerning our demand that Ohio lawmakers protect our democracy. To Senate President Matt Huffman, House Speaker Bob Cup, religious and civil liberties are in grave danger in the state of Ohio. As people of conscience and people of faith, we cannot stay silent in the face of the worst existential threat to First Amendment freedoms in our state's history. Our legislature has introduced bills designed to discourage public witness, protest, and dissent, laws that would criminalize churches and nonprofits that engage in public witness have been proposed alongside restrictions that will make it harder to vote. In the midst of a once in a generation pandemic, while our state strains under decades of underinvestment in social programs, infrastructure, and essential worker protections, the Ohio legislature spent its time targeting speech conservative lawmakers do not like. Legislators are promoting a crackdown on voices that speak truth to power, aspiring to stifle any people-driven effort to hold Ohio's public servants accountable. This portfolio of anti-democracy bills betrays a very clear racial bias, limiting voter rights, stifling dissent, criminalizing protests, and punishing faith communities that participate in public witness of their moral convictions will disproportionately harm black and brown communities and organizations. We declare that Ohio will never bow to totalitarian pressures that seek to disenfranchise voters and eliminate morally motivated dissent. God has a burning desire for justice. Some say that the burning bush described in the book of Exodus is actually representative of this divine yearning, the burning that is in the heart of God for justice for all of God's people. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. understood this when he wrote it is God's desire for justice that makes the struggle for justice and freedom holy ground. We are standing on holy ground and we are burning for justice. We will not be silent because the fire of commitment within us will not let us. Amen. And now, a brief word that I offer myself. 
I am a native Clevelander who has lived in eight states and the District of Columbia. Inside every community that I have called home, I was surrounded by untold numbers of hardworking, socially responsible people. In visible and sometimes less obvious ways, these diverse women, men, and children took pride in who they were while honoring their neighbors and doing their best to contribute to the common good. They did not always agree on the important issues of, the, of life and the day, but they found a way to live fairly and peacefully with each other. This is not just my story. It is that of scores of people across this nation and across Ohio. There are people who understand that life is full of ups and downs and that at times we win, while at other times, no matter how well we prepared and worked, we lose. Yet there was an ethic at work in so many of our families and neighborhoods, a standard that led us to be gracious when we won and to commit to working harder, longer, smarter, and more creatively when we lost. Winning did not authorize successful people to silence or mute opposing views, and losing did not justify the less successful at, to ask that the rules of competition be changed to thus disable their opponents. Now I know the picture I just painted did not apply to every context and situation. Even so, fair-minded Americans understand that these principles form the moral infrastructure on which we can build and maintain fair, balanced, and just ways of life. As fair-minded fair Ohioans contemplate measures that are in the docket of Ohio lawmakers, bills designed to silence and render unlawful the public witness of dissenting Ohio voices, and bills designed to discourage many hardworking Ohioans from participating in elections by making it harder and more challenging for them to cast a vote, it becomes evident that fairness is not a feature of the sponsors of these bills. And morality is not a motivation for the supporters of these bills. Rather than considering voices of dissent, framers of these bills seek to crush them. Instead of working harder and more creatively to win elections, authors of these bills seek to wield legislative power in ways that will mute the votes and voices of Ohioans who are not in their basis and thus tilt the proverbial election seesaw in their favor. These bills, which are part of a not so hidden national political playbook drip with the social toxins of interposition and nullification. And they ask level-headed, patriotic Ohioans to reject codes of fairness and morality that have served as the backbone of communities across this state for generations. But finally, as a Christian, I have two questions for lawmakers who also identify as Christian. Who would Jesus silence? No one. Who would Jesus block? No one. Neither should you. In the name of fairness and morality, I join fair-minded Ohioans people of faith across the state and calling for 
the protection of democracy through the rejection of these bills. May God bless us all. I'm the Reverend Joan Van Beesler, the director of Unitarian Universalist Justice Ohio. And I want to raise up this morning the importance of our democratic process as a means of honoring the inherent worth and dignity of all people and the need for us to hear all of our voices as we work to create beloved community in Ohio. Now, our democratic process rests on a foundation of voting rights, as well as the First Amendment rights to assemble and engage in freedom of speech. Our democracy also requires an equitable and fair redistricting process to result in fair election maps. To effectively address the many serious social justice issues we face today, including the recovery from this pandemic, we need a strong democratic process here in Ohio and across the nation. Now, guaranteeing the sacred right to vote for all citizens has been and should continue to be a nonpartisan issue. But in many places across the country, including Ohio, the sacred guarantee of voting rights is at risk today. States have introduced hundreds of bills that would erect barriers to the ballot box for millions of American citizens. But we know that for democracy to work for all of us, it must include us all. Now, Ohio is also considering bills that would use fines and threats of felonies to discourage people from exercising their rights to protest and speak truth to power. We need our Ohio elected leadership to stop discriminatory and restrictive state voting bills, the bills that will serve to deter the votes of communities of color and young people, as well as communities of disabled and elderly. We need leadership to uphold our First Amendment rights to speech and assembly and stop the current anti-protest bills in the Ohio House and Senate. These efforts to block First Amendment and voting rights are not only anti-democratic, they're also an assault on the dignity and worth of people in our country. And as people of faith, we are called to close this gap between the brokenness of what is and that which ought to be. We're called to a higher standard of truth telling, even if that truth is inconvenient. And here's some truth, restricting voting under the pretense of election security is based on a mountain of lies. Blocking our rights to assemble and speak truth to power is a direct affront to who we are as US citizens. The truth is that these efforts are often rooted in the lie that the full benefits of US citizenship are a privilege for the elite few rather than a fundamental right for all of us. The truth is that America is in the midst of a, a new kind of civil, civil war with battles for justice on many fronts, including First Amendment and voting rights. And we're approaching a critical crossroads, I believe. The road that we take will have consequences and long-term effects that will determine what America wants to be and wants to become. So coming together here in public witness, is a form of democratic expression so much older than the United States itself. We gather here to shine this light of truth on what is happening in our state legislature to ensure that we all understand what is at stake here and to hold our legislators accountable, demanding action on the important issues of the day. So whatever our color, our background, or our zip code, Americans across the country value our freedoms. We want the freedom to vote in a transparent process we trust 
So we can elect leaders who will deliver for us, leaders who will deliver protection for our First Amendment rights, who will support the creation of fair district maps, who will protect our access to the ballot box. We demand that our elected Ohio leaders protect our democracy and our freedoms and build a better future for all of us, no exceptions. The late civil rights icon, Representative John Lewis once said, freedom is not a state, it is an act. It is not some enchanted garden perched high on a distant plateau where we can finally sit down and rest. Freedom is the continuous action we must all take and each generation must do its part to create an even more fair and more just society. And that is why we're here today. Hello, my name is Reverend Dan Clark, and I'm the Ohio Director for Faith and Public Life, a multi-faith advocacy organization. We the people turned out in record numbers in 2020 to choose new leaders at a moment of crisis and opportunity. In the face of a surging pandemic and economic crisis, deep systemic racism and attacks on the right to vote, we joined in solidarity to stop our country's descent into white supremacist tyranny. We prayed, we acted, and we voted. But now, certain politicians are seeking to silence voters instead of listening to us, especially voters of color, young voters, seniors, and people with disabilities. Here in Ohio, legislators are working to build new barriers to voting, such as new restrictions on ballot drop boxes, early voting, and mail-in ballots. There's no two ways about it. Two Lima residents, Senate President Matt Huffman and Speaker of the House Bob Cup, are overseeing efforts to pass modern Jim Crow laws targeted at disenfranchising Black voters and we say no more. As people of faith, we must work together across race, place, gender, and class to make sure everyone can exercise their freedom to vote. This requires defeating these restrictive barriers, passing laws that make voting safe and accessible for all, and making sure every person knows that the freedom to vote is a fundamental moral issue for the faith community. No matter our race, religion, background or zip code, most people of faith believe that for our democracy to work for all of us, it must include all of us. Throughout our history, many of us have come together across race and faith to make the freedom to vote a reality. This sacred right is the foundation of a government that serves us all, not just a wealthy few. When we are free from barriers to voting, we can make more strides than ever to make America a democracy where everyone thrives, everyone enjoys the right to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness. But President Huffman and Speaker Cup want to take us backwards. Instead of doing their duty to help us vote, they're trying to limit access. It doesn't seem that these politicians actually believe in and value democracy. Instead, they want fewer people to vote and they want to choose their voters with appallingly gerrymandered districts. So to move forward, we must make sure that every eligible voter can cast a ballot safely and without barriers so we can elect leaders who believe in justice and liberty for all. The ancient Hebrew prophet Isaiah has stern words for President Huffman and Speaker Cup. And as men of faith, I pray that they heed the word of God when Isaiah says in chapter 10, woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees, to deprive the poor of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people, making widows their prey and robbing the fatherless. What will you do on the day of reckoning when disaster comes from afar? To whom will you run for help? Where will you leave your riches? Nothing will remain but to cringe among the captives or fall among the slain. That is why we're here in Lima today where President Huffman and Speaker Cup call home because next week they return to work at the State House. We are joining together as people of faith to defend our freedom to vote, to declare each other's divinely given dignity by demanding that our state house ensure every voter has equal access to the ballot. 
Then we can do as Isaiah's contemporary, the prophet Micah told us, is required of humankind to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen. God bless America. God bless America. God bless America. I am Brandy Slaughter. I am the policy director at the Ohio Council of Churches, and I stand resolute. Resolute under the power that and the authority given to me by my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm here to declare indeed that God has blessed America. America is one of the best countries in the world. And we are blessed because of our ability to participate in our democracy. But we are not without challenges. There are attacks on our work to become a more perfect union. And these attacks come in the form of the right limitations on our right to protest and minimizing our access to the ballot box and gerrymandering our legislative districts. We are at war. It has been reported that our occupation in Afghanistan had, was our longest war, but I disagree. I believe our longest war has been fought on American soil, a war against white supremacy which has in turn created these methods to retain power, which fails to recognize the human dignity of all people uh, and disenfranchises people of color and the poor. These attacks on democracy are promoted by rich and powerful groups that are determined to win at all costs. And why is that? To maintain the status quo, a status quo that has long neglected so many of us, a status quo which has had a proverbial knee on our necks. One that seeks to maintain systems and institutions of oppression. And I'm here on behalf of 17 denominations that the Council of Churches represents to say no more. There is no question that blood has been shed my ancestors lost their lives in protest and for fighting for my right to vote. Um, and to quote Pastor Fells earlier today, faith is not afraid. As people of faith and as leaders in God's church, we have to stand in the gap. And I'm reminded of a song sung um, in the church as a child. And the lyrics are, we are soldiers in the army. We have to fight although we have to cry. We have to hold up that bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. My prayer today is that Lord help me to war against spiritual wickedness in high places. And yes, I view these legislations and, and these um, policies that are being sought out as wickedness, spiritual wickedness. I stand in judgment of these evils and these laws that seek to limit civic participation and these people that perpetuate oppression. Let me close with the 44th Psalm. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war, my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he whom I trust, who subdue the people under me. God bless you and God bless America. We're done? Yes. Thank you. All right.